Hi, this is Jeff Wooster, Global Sustainability Director at Dow. I'm joined today by Ron Keidelman, Vice President of Corporate Innovation and Sustainability for Sealed Air. And this is Looped In, where we're talking about unlocking the power of a circular economy. Thanks for joining me today, Ron. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here, Jeff. Nice to, nice to join you. Glad to have you on the program today. Let's get started by talking a little bit about your background. Tell us about your role as a VP for Corporate Innovation and Sustainability. Tell us how those got to be connected uh, in one job role and uh, a little bit about what led you to work on sustainability uh, many years ago. Okay, great. Well, let me, uh, let me start by just introducing Sealed Air a little bit. A lot of people don't know us as a company. We're a company that, uh, that, that takes um, innovation seriously and one that you probably don't know that we are the original company that uh, invented bubble wrap. Bubble wrap, the iconic packaging that was made from plastic that originally started not as packaging, but as wallpaper. So another example of how you can um, you know, uh, start out in one direction and, and, and move in, in another direction. So that was over 60 years ago. And we've continued that innovation legacy as, we, uh, as, as we've uh, innovated now in the food space, industrial markets, and then uh, also in e-commerce more recently. Now, for me personally, I have over 35 years at, at the company. And in those 35 years, innovation has been a major part of what I've been involved in. Uh, for about 10 of those years, I was uh, leading an innovate or a, a sustainability program at Sealed Air. And then uh, just recently, we brought those two together. Yeah, I agree. I started as an innovation person. I became a chemical engineer because I wanted to be an inventor. And, uh, and I had the fortunate opportunity to invent lots of things during the first part of my career and, uh, and then move into sustainability where I continued to bring that innovation mindset over. Uh, I think it's also interesting that um, sealed air refers to the air inside the bubbles on bubble wrap. And I didn't know that it started as wallpaper. So that's a great example of how uh, one product can come from another product. Uh, which brings me to my next topic, which is circular economy. So can you tell us how sealed air and how you personally define circular economy? Yeah, I, I, I sure can. And I think it's important to, to really think about what circular economy means to, to a lot of people. When you, when you say that term, a lot of people immediately go to something like, oh, it's, it's about recyclability, right? You make, you make plastic packaging. It, it's got to be recyclable. But the way we look at it is there's two words in there. There's the circular and then there's the economy. On the circular side, yes, absolutely. We think that all materials, whether it be paper, plastic, whatever, you know, should be, should be conserved, reused, recycled as part of that. So recycling and recyclability go hand in hand. But the economy is about efficiency. You can do things in a circular way that aren't efficient. You can do things efficiently that aren't circular. And so the question is, is there a way to do both? So in the sealed air definition, we really strive to do both. We try and make materials that are thin, lightweight, highly protective for the products that they protect and have the ability to make them out of recycled content and make them recyclable. And that to me is, is, is what really embodies the circular economy is reducing your overall impact while you're conserving you know, those, those key natural resources by making things uh, go through a circular loop. I think that's really important. I remember one time at a Ameripen meeting that we were at together, um, David Alloway from the Oregon Department of Environmental Quality said on the phone, he said, circular economy does not eliminate your need for conservation. You still need to be efficient with your resources. And, uh, and I'm glad to, to see Seal Air buying into that notion as well, uh, as I know that Dow does. Um, can you give us some specific examples of how you put circular economy into action at Sealed Air? Yeah, let me um, let me let me draw from our, our our legacy, our past here, a bubble wrap. I I do happen to have a sample to show you of of our iconic product, and and uh, you know besides the fun factor that you have of, of being able to pop the bubbles, yes. Um, what we've done with our bubble wrap product line is we've now introduced recycle content into it. So it's, it's at least 90% recycled content as, as part of the formulation. But we've also then changed the formulation somewhat and verified that it, it, it can easily be recycled as well. In fact, in, in North America, it's eligible to carry the how to recycle label um, for store drop-off as, as an example. So here, uh, if you will, a mature product line that's seen a real renaissance or resurgence in the area of sustainability 
because it's not good enough just to make it cushioning or to have fun, but it's got to have recycled content and recyclability right now. So that's that's one tangible example of of what we're doing now in the R and D labs is looking across our portfolio and and changing a lot of our products uh, to make them more sustainable. That's a great example of how you make a product recyclable after use, but also uh, really make it circular by putting recycled content into the manufacturing of the product in the first place. So thanks for sharing that specific example. I know that Dow and Seal there share a lot of commitments around driving towards a circular economy and, and trying to improve the world around us uh, through the products that we make and sell. Can you uh, give us a little more detail about Seal there specific commitments and your 2025 sustainability pledge? Yeah, we made a pledge a little bit over uh, uh, two years ago now that basically 100% of our products would be recyclable or reusable, and we would uh, incorporate at least 50% on average of recycled content across our portfolio as well. And of that, 60% would be both consumer. At the time that we made that pledge uh, back in 2018, that was revolutionary to, to be able to make a pledge like that. A lot of my colleagues would say, you've got to be kidding. How in the world would you ever deliver on a pledge like that? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm pleased to say two years later, we're actually on track. And by 2025, all of our products are going to be recyclable, and we're going to hit that threshold of recycled content. It's, it's a lot of heavy lifting, but uh, you know, that's, that's an example of, of, a, of a pledge. Now, there is a third element to that pledge. The third element is about collaboration that we, uh, we committed also to, to lead in this space by collaborating with others because you know, such an ambitious pledge, particularly in an area that uh, you know, is, is very challenging to, to see recyclability and recycle content, takes a lot of effort from other companies. So you know, as Dow is a key supplier of ours, working with our suppliers is, is part of that strategy. Of course, working with our customers and their downstream customers but also working with other facets of the energy or the uh, industry that uh, that support us as well, including um, you know, companies that work with uh, recovery of materials or reprocessing of materials. And then let's not forget organizations that bring us all together, uh, you know, alliances and such like the Alliance to End Plastic Waste or, or, or key associations or even NGOs that, uh, that are working in this space as well. So um, very ambitious pledge. Uh, Hard to see how we were going to get there at the beginning, but we're on track, and uh, 2025 is coming very fast. Can you uh, elaborate maybe just a little bit more on, on sort of what the process is to go about trying to achieve such an ambitious pledge? I know when it was announced, I, I thought, wow, that's really fantastic. It really puts Seal there in a leadership position, but can you just sort of uh, give us an idea of what it really takes to get to it? Okay, well, that's a really great question, Jeff, because it does take a lot of, uh, a lot of work, hard work. Let me show you an example of how that might apply when we take a case of, of one of our food packaging products. So food packaging, very thin, lightweight film that you might use on cheese, for example, is very difficult today to figure out how you would source recycle content for an application like that and how you might recycle it afterwards. So we really had to study the value chain and understand what materials were going to be available for us in the future. As you look at that value chain, there was actually a gap there was a place where that, that the infrastructure still needed to be developed, and specifically around that technology. So Sealed Air recently made, a, uh, made an investment in a company called Plastic Energy. Plastic Energy is one of the advanced recycling companies that has demonstrated that they can take waste plastics and make, um, make new plastics out of it, working with different partners. And we've taken that plastic and then put it into food packaging that you can now uh, you know, purchase in retail stores in Europe. That's fantastic. Uh, I'm so happy to hear the progress uh, on advanced recycling. I think it's going to be a really important part of the future for our entire industry and to certainly commend Seal there for its leadership in making a reality. Um, can you tell us maybe a little bit about what it takes to balance the different responsibilities that you have as a company, the, the responsibility to your shareholders to earn a return, uh, your desire to do what's right for the environment, um, the fact that you are a plastics manufacturer and you make plastic packaging? Um, but also uh, the important uses of your product in protecting food from spoiling and, and, and staying safe and healthy for consumers. You know, how do you balance all those things? Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's a lot of complexity there, Jeff, that, 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 you, that you pointed out. Now, first, I should say Sealed Air is a packaging company, not necessarily a plastic packaging company. 
we, we do have a number of offers, uh, they are fiber-based or paper-based. We just particularly think that plastic is the right material for a lot of those applications, you know, given its, its performance and all that. But what we also said was that plastic should never become waste. It's too valuable of a resource to allow it to uh, you know, end up in a landfill or incinerated or even worse, you know, disposed of in, in the environment. So a lot of what is guiding us right now is finding the right material for the application, but also addressing that end of life. How do we bring value back? And the value is a really interesting dynamic because often you know, people will say, well, you won't pay more for sustainability. So what that means is you've got to use innovation to figure out how to drive total costs down, even though part of the value chain might see an increase of cost in another area. So it's that art of, of finding ways to reduce or, 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 or minimize costs at the same time that you know it sometimes you need to make investments at another end. That's, that's the art of sustainability. Ron, the cryovac name is certainly well known and has a long history of, of innovation and delivering superior products for protection of, of food and other products. Can you um, tell us why you don't think that it makes sense to have things like food packaging to be considered in the same category as as single-use packaging like uh, disposable cups and things? Yeah, I I think that's a a challenge that we have as an industry right now is to really understand those products that, that need to be in plastic versus those that we choose to put in plastic. And, um, We've been very careful to try and delineate uh, single-use plastics from those that really provide an essential function to do things like extend the shelf life of food or to provide cushioning through an e-commerce value chain, et cetera. So um, we see that the, the real value that's, that's derived uh, from what we call these essential plastics is the job that they do. Too often, we focus on plastic as the product itself. Plastic. And packaging is not the product. The product is what goes inside the package. Package is, is doing a job of moving products down value chains and supply chains. So if you take something like, um, like a protein product, like, like meat, for example, the value of that meat in terms of a carbon footprint is, is oftentimes tens, if not hundreds of times more impactful than the small amount of packaging that might, might go around it. So as you can imagine, any loss of that product as it goes through the value chain can, can be offset with, any, uh, with investments that you make in packaging. You know, that's, a, that, that's a traditional argument that we've made about the efficiency. What's changed in recent years is we have to make, continue to maintain improved efficiency, but also make those, uh, those packages circular. In other words, they need to be recyclable or reusable uh, to, to really you know, have a total sustainable benefit to the you know, to the customers. That's an important point. I think it's really important to people that we are in fact able to close the loop, but we have to remember also that our products exist for a reason and that's to get the product to the consumer safely. So we can't lose sight of how important that performance is. Um, can you uh, just maybe share with us any advice that you might have um, for our customers or your customers or other people who are working in the space that are trying to set ambitious targets and, and meet big goals? Uh, what can they do to be more successful, and how can they approach their their challenges? Okay, well, I I, I view it in kind of three categories. I'm going to call it uh, educate, collaborate, and innovate. So educate, you got to get really smart about the the things that matter most. As I mentioned, you know, packaging that's used to protect food as it goes through a supply chain, understanding the carbon footprint, the value of of protecting that food versus the carbon footprint of the packaging to really understand kind of what's important. So you can make informed decisions, you know, about that. Uh, The second is, is around collaborating. You know, sustainability is a really complex topic and getting even more complex and no one individual, no one company uh, can, can have all the answers. So collaborating, working with other partners up and down the value chain, working key suppliers like Dow, for example, uh, working with our customers, even working with uh, you know, NGOs and associations, it's absolutely critical to bring the best thinking together because we're solving huge societal uh, challenges, and it takes you know, really good ideas that, that uh, come from many places. But the third part is innovate. We cannot be locked in the products and the processes that we have in the past or even in the present. We need to be thinking about the future. 
what do we need to be doing with our materials, with the way that we uh, utilize packaging, and even more important, how we bring it back uh, as, as part of those value chains. Um, so those are the way I think about it, you know, you know, educate and, and collaborate and innovate, and that's the magic formula for, uh, for being sustainable. Well, those are certainly three of the things that you and I have worked together on for many years and uh, really want to thank you today for joining us and sharing your perspective on circular economy, uh, how we can make a better society, how we can collaborate and educate and, and innovate to drive improvements and, uh, and such. Um, want to thank the audience for tuning in today, for joining us on Looped In. I uh, appreciate your joining us today and uh, listening to how we can uh, take advantage of uh, the circular economy and uh, unlock its power. Um, for a better future. So until next time, thank you everyone. Goodbye.